The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh, the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We just heard Jesus say, I am the bread of life. Jesus does not say, I am the little Debbies of life, or the leaven and bologna of life, or the hippie hot dogs of life, or the cod liver oil of life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. But neither does Jesus say, I am the rich, semi-sweet, dark chocolate of life, or the medium, rare, Delmonico steak of life, or the fried chicken of life. No, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Now that's not something that we would um, reject, but it's not something fancy either. It's common, ordinary bread. Every culture has bread in one or many forms. As a staple of life, bread is common and yet uncommon because it does have so many different forms. There's white bread, wheat bread, pumpernickel, French, Italian, pita, tortilla, sourdough, and you could just go on and on. So you say the word bread, and chances are that some good image or taste or smell or texture is bound to pop up in our heads. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Now all of those other breads will grow stale and inedible in a pretty short period of time. Even the manna from heaven that fed the Hebrews in the wilderness was temporary. But Jesus came offering a new kind of bread, one that doesn't go bad, one that is not temporary, one that nourishes always and lasts forever, one that sustains relationships and encourages hope. So very many people live without the food of hope. I'm sure that every one of you here today could name someone who lives without hope. And in a certain way, these people are pale and, and look undernourished. Others might suffer from obesity, spiritual obesity, as they try to fill that hole 
within themselves with food that does not last. And others search hopelessly for that prince or princess charming to come with the food of romantic hope, the romantic love that will make all of their troubles disappear, all of their loneliness disappear. And still others keep trying to fill themselves up or satisfy themselves with material goods, only to discover that their hunger is never satisfied. Like those children we have so often seen on television with um, swollen bellies, uh, many people, it seems, live as if they were simply waiting to die. They live with estrangement, separation, maybe estrangement from themselves or from family and loved ones, from their parents or children or spouse. Maybe separated from an old friend after an old argument. And maybe especially separated from God. That kind of hopelessness starves our soul eventually. So in our text today, we, that follows um, Jesus just having fed the 5,000, and now these people are just following him and sticking with him. The miracle of the loaves reminds the people of the manna in the wilderness. Could this man be the new Moses? Could this guy work wonders for us? So they demanded that Jesus prove himself by making bread from heaven rise up on the spot. Jesus knew that they needed more, so he gave them himself instead. But this wasn't exactly what they had in mind. A relationship with this guy? A traveling preacher? No, they were thinking more along the lines of prime rib, Delmonico steak, or sweet chocolate. They wanted good food and great wonders. They wanted miracles at their beck and call. Jesus corrects them, even as he feeds them. It was God, not Moses, who gave the man in the wilderness, and it's God who gives the true bread from heaven, the bread that gives life to the world. Give us some of that bread, the people shouted. I am the bread of life, he says. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This was probably a little bit confusing to the people. And maybe we're a little bit confused too. How is Jesus the bread of life? And how is Jesus like and not like the manna in the wilderness? Well, Jesus is like manna in that through Jesus God reminds us that we live because God provides not always what we want but exactly what we need some food some love breath water a relationship with the one who is the bread of heaven but Jesus is different from the manna in the wilderness in that Jesus feeds us through a relationship. It's all about relationship with God. There are all kinds of reasons that people become separated from one another and from God. Sin, that brokenness, is certainly the biggest reason. But the point is, that none of us are immune to broken relationships. 
I would say that uh, it's my, been my privilege of knowing many families over the years of my ministry. And I can tell you with certitude that every single family, no matter what it looks like on the outside, has been affected by broken relationships. We are all affected by broken relationships. And yet relationships are as necessary for life as is bread. That's how we were created. We need to be in relationship to be fully human. Having said that, we also know that the fabric of most relationships is pretty thin. God knows how fragile our relationships are, how fragile our lives are. And God knows that we need to be continually fed. And that's why God sends the bread from heaven in the person of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, God comes as the bread of life a sustenance for those who are ill and separated, a banquet for those who are grieving, those who have hit rock bottom, a feast for us all. And in Jesus, God leaves a trail of breadcrumbs, if you will, out of the wilderness of hopelessness and separation and into relationship, into community, into communion. Breadcrumbs that lead us home. Something inexplicable happens when we start picking up and eating those breadcrumbs of life that God leaves for us. When we start to internalize the hope, the peace, the unconditional love that is Jesus Christ, we come to realize that the very presence of this bread means that there is no disagreement, no argument, no brokenness, no sin big enough to keep God from loving us. This bread is not only an invitation to life, it is life. The bread gives us life because it is our hope. It is the very life of God enfleshed in our human world. And that condition is summed up very well, and it is scriptural, in um, the confession. In God we live and move and have our being. The very life of God is all around us and in us. And we are reminded of that every time we gather at the table to take those common elements of bread and wine. Wherever there is humility or gentleness, patience, where there's unity in the spirit, wherever there's peace, wherever there's truth spoken in love, there we are fed the bread of life. Wherever love triumphs over sinfulness, hopelessness, there is the bread of life. There is God's own life given to us and for us. And if that's what God has done for us in Christ, if that's how God feels about us, if God is truly willing to let sin and estrangement be the focus of our existence, but instead chooses to feed us bread for life, then what shall our response be? How shall we live differently from the world? Will we let our differences define our relationships? 
Will we let our disagreements be cause for separation? Or will we live lives worthy of our calling, imitating the one whose overcoming love rises like bread? In Jesus Christ, the bread also rises to overcome all that would keep us apart from our God and from one another, to overcome even death itself. May we all be nourished and empowered by this gift of bread, bread of life. And may we rise up and live in the unconditional love that is in us through our relationship in Jesus Christ. God has proclaimed a feast of the heart and given us the bread of life to nourish and sustain us in all our relationships, in all times, and in all places, in this world, and the next. Amen. Let us pray. God, bread of life, we are so hungry for your word. We thirst for your good news. Open our eyes and ears to you and send us to give your word, your bread, your life to others. Amen. <laughs>